Hey guys, welcome to iCode. I am Pallav and in this video, I am going to talk about A-B testing in iOS. What is A-B testing? How is it useful in increasing convergence and engagement? How can we implement it using Firebase and things around those lines? So let's get started. Before understanding the concept of A-B testing and how it is done or why do we need Firebase? Are there any other APIs provided by Apple for doing it? Let's first understand that why do we need it? On LinkedIn, you would have seen the posts where two designs for the same products are compared and people generally ask that which one is better, left one is better or right one is better and why. And if you are not able to recollect these posts, here's an example. So the same product, it is being presented in two different designs and then people generally ask that which one is more appealing. And the reason for doing this comparison is to understand the user's preference, that which design is going to work for your product. So after multiple iterations, brainstorming sessions, feedbacks, a design is finalized and then the product is shipped into the market. But this dilemma doesn't stop here. Even when the product is shipped, this doubt between what is going to work or what will fail, it still continues. So you would be thinking that after shipping the product, after finalizing the design, why the doubt is there? And the reason is that when you are having a user base of 20 million, 50 million, 100 million users, you cannot completely rely on the thought process of a bunch of people which are there in your design team or tech team or product team. You actually need to try that new design, that new feature with your real audience. So here's an example for the same. These are the two screenshots of Zomato app. And if you look closely, you will see that in the left one, the groceries tab is missing while in the right one, it is there. It is also missing from the section where categories are listed of first legends healthy. So what is the reason behind this difference that it is available in one and not in the second? So before landing onto the A-B testing part, let's discuss the other possible reasons. Definitely it can be because of the region difference. In one region, they have the support for delivering the grocery in the other one, they are not having it. So that's why it is missing from, from that region. There can be a difference of pro user versus non pro user. So one of the users is having the facility of getting the groceries delivered. Definitely it can be one of the reasons and we cannot neglect these possibilities. But at the same time, there's one more possibility that probably they are trying out something. Probably they are experimenting that what if we try to sell the groceries through a food delivery app, whether it will work or not. And since this is an experiment, probably they do not want to try it on all the users. So some of them are getting to see the grocery step while for some it is missing. Till now it is understandable that because they are trying out something, the variation is there. So how are they going to track that the grocery step that that particular feature is working for them or not? And the obvious way is analytics. They would have configured some analytics event for grocery step which they will see in their dashboard if users are going to that particular tab and the conversion, the engagement is increasing or not. So this is fine. This is how the things work. This is how the analytics is used. This is how the conversions are tracked. But there's a problem with this. If this is the only way through which you are going to track the convergence, probably the data might not be 100% true. And there could be some other external reasons because of which the sessions, the engagement, the convergence would have increased while you are thinking that it is because of your new feature or your new design. Now, what do I mean by other reasons? So if your app is being promoted by influencers, celebrities, actors, it is definitely going to attract the users which will increase the user sessions, the engagement that you will see, it will reflect as a spike in your analytics dashboard. But the reason behind that spike is not your new feature or your new design. It is the fan following of that particular celebrity who is endorsing your product. So then how can you be very sure that the new design or the new feature that you are trying, it is working for you. And here comes A-B testing to the rescue. A-B testing is one of the most effective ways for tracking that what is working for you and what is not, what your users are liking and what they are disliking. And eventually you can make the changes, roll out the features which are being liked by your users, which will increase the convergence and will make your product healthy. It will make the product grow. So let's understand the concept of A-B testing first and then we'll see that how can we implement it. So A-B testing says that split your user base in two buckets, A and B. One of the bucket will be treated as control and the other one will be treated as variant. This is the terminology that we use with A-B testing. Once you have splitted your user base in two buckets, you will show one design to bucket A, the control, the other design to bucket B, the variant, and this experiment will continue for X number of days for a particular duration. And once you start getting the results, once you get to know that which variation is performing better, you can stop the other one and can roll out the one that is performing to the 100% users. So that is the concept of A-B testing. Now let's see that how it can be implemented. Are there any APIs provided by Apple for doing this? And the answer is yes and no. From iOS 15, Apple introduced something called product page optimization through which you can show different screenshots, different description to the different set of users. 
can run this experiment for a duration till the time you get the results can analyze those results in the form of these reports and then you can decide and then you can take the call that which one you want to go ahead with so this can be done only for the product detail page and essentially that is not what we want we actually want to try some of our features some of our design in the app and that is not something that apple is supporting natively i mean there are no apis provided by apple for doing that which means that we'll have to look for some other companies some other service providers for this and there are a bunch of companies which provide the services for ab testing like optimizely adobe but in this video i'll show you that how it can be done by firebase the reason for choosing firebase is because most of the applications use firebase as an analytic service and since the configuration of the project setup is already there probably firebase is the good choice for conducting ab so if your application is not already using firebase services which means that the project is not already configured then you will have to configure a firebase project first this is very easy and can be done in few minutes on the firebase console all you need to do is just provide the name of your project just agree to the terms and conditions and you are done once the firebase project is created you will have to create an ios application within that project this will be used for linking your actual application with the one created on firebase again this is very easy go for configuring an ios app provide the bundle identifier of your application and it is done it will create a google service info p list which you need to download and bundle it in your application while you are done with configuring the firebase project you will also need the implementation of your variation in your ios application what i want to say is that you will need to have that implementation which you want to show as the variation so agreed that 50% of your users won't see it but for the rest 50% where you actually want to show that implementation it needs to be there in your ios application you need to develop that feature so as an example i tried this in the first screenshot if you'll see the mood section is missing while there's a cta for add medicine in the second one the cta for add medicine is missing while there's a section for mood and in the third one both cta and the mood section are there so the implementation of these variations should be there in your application of course things won't work magically next what you need to do is trigger an analytics event for the feature which you want to track so in my case i wanted to track if the users are tapping on the mood section and if the bottom sheet is being presented or not so assume that i am logging an event i am triggering an event called mood section clicked when user taps on the mood section and logging of an event through firebase is pretty easy all you need to do is firebase.log event name of the event and a dictionary as the parameter as simple as that so because of this an event would be recorded on the firebase analytics dashboard whenever a user will click on the mood section once this is done the next step is to set up the remote config if you haven't used the remote config before or if you are not aware that what remote config is it is basically one of the services provided by firebase which you can treat as as the backend service not the actual backend but a config kind of thing so the feature flags can be fetched from the remote config or basically any kind of configuration that you want for your application you can actually put it on firebase config and whenever your application will be launched you will pull that config from the firebase and then based on the keys that you have configured in that remote config you will accordingly take the call that what is to be done if it is a feature flag you will toggle the visibility of that particular feature and things on those lines so here we are going to use the remote config for deciding that when should we show the the mood section and when should we hide it for setting up the remote config all you need to do is go to the firebase console select remote config from the options available in the left create a key in my case i am creating show mood section define the data type for that key provide some description so that you can come back later and check that this key was was created for what provide some default value if you want to in my case or in the case of ab testing if you are configuring it through the remote config set it as null we will see that why we are leaving it as null and from where it is going to take the value but just create the key for now in this example it is show mode section it will vary according to your use case so now that we have remote config set up the next piece of the puzzle is creation of an ab experiment for configuring an ab select the ab testing options from the left click on create experiment and then you will be asked that what way are you going to use the ab and in our case we are going to use ab we are going to conduct the ab test using our remote config that we did in the last step so select remote config here once you select the remote config you will be asked to create to configure an ab experiment and there are four parts of this the first one is the basic details the name of the experiment and an optional description the second one is target and which is a little more complex and more important so details provided in this section will decide that who are going to be the target users for your experiment so choose your ios app here because obviously you want to conduct the experiment on your ios app users in my case it's my medic the dummy app that i'm trying the experiment on and then there would be some other fields also some other filters also through which you will decide your target audience 
So the second important filter can be the build number. This would be the version of your iOS app from which that feature is available. Generally the version in which that feature was implemented and submitted to the app store. There can be some other filters for example geography, languages, if your application is available in multiple geographies while you want to conduct the experiment on some specific ones you can select it here. Same can be done for the language and there can be multiple filters based on your use case. You can also decide the percentage of the user for which this experiment will be conducted. So if you are not very confident about the new implementation that you are going to try out and if you feel that you know it can hamper the user experience, it can even lower the, the convergence, the engagement and you are not very confident, you can limit it to 50%, 30%, you can try it out and if you see that the experiment is going fine, you can later change this percentage and can roll out the experiment to 100% users. So for now, it is 50%. The third piece is goals that what do you want to actually achieve, what, what is your goal, what do you want to really track. So in my case, I want to track that how many users are actually tapping on the mood section. For this, I am already recording an event called mood section clicked. So you need to mention the same event name over here so that it can be tracked and treated as the goal. So mention your analytics event here. The last part is creation of the variations. So one is going to be your baseline, the control or the bucket A. And the second one would be your variant where you want to try out the feature. So for both of these variations, the baseline and the variant A, mention the remote config key that you have configured as the parameter and provide a value for it. So in our case, it was show mood section. That was the key that we created and the values would be default and variant for the baseline and the variant A respectively. Now these values can actually change. It is not mandatory to provide default and variant. It can be any string. So if you just want to run an experiment for changing the text of the label, you can actually get the text through these keys. So in that case, it won't be default or variant. It would be the actual text that you want to try on the label. But what I recommend is to control those things from your backend. So essentially, just pass this variant or default to your backend and then let the backend take call that what, what they want to show for variant or what they want to show for the default or the, the control variation. So when you will fetch the remote config from Firebase, you will get these values for this key that is show mood section. And then you can pass show mood section is default or show mood section is variant as a parameter in your request to the backend and then backend will accordingly send you the response and based on the response received from backend you can accordingly render the things. Now which user is going to receive default for this key and which one is going to receive variant for this key is completely random and driven by Firebase. That is something which is not in our control. Now our AB experiment has also been configured and we are ready to run it. And the last step remaining here is to test the experiment. So before we roll out our experiment to our actual users in the production environment, we would like to test it that how control is behaving and how the variant is behaving. If something is breaking on the baseline or if something is breaking on the variation that we created, we actually want to try it. So for the testing purpose, we need to manage the test devices. And for doing that, we need the auth token of that particular device, the Firebase auth token. The Firebase auth token is basically a string which is used for uniquely identifying a device and that can be printed in the logs this way. So copy the Firebase token from the logs, go to the dashboard, go to the Firebase console, select the option for managing the test devices, paste the auth token there and then select the baseline or variation whatever you want to try on that particular device. Once you do that and relaunch the application, you will see the variation that you have selected while configuring the test device. If it was variant, you will get the variant. If it was baseline, you will get the baseline. So that way you can try that your experiment is working fine. Once you're confident, you can actually roll out, you can actually start your experiment. Once the experiment is finished and you got the results, you got to know that which variation outperformed the other one, you can take an informed decision, you can take the call that which variation should be rolled out to 100% users. This is how we get the results. So Firebase will show that by what percentage which variation outperformed the other one. If your variation outperformed the baseline, what was the percentage by which it won and then what is the confidence in that. So in the later case, if you see, it is 19% and the confidence is more than 99%. So with this result, we can take the call that the feature, the new design that we wanted to try out, it is actually working for us. It is increasing the convergence. It is increasing the engagement and we should be ruling it out to 100% users. That was pretty much for this video. If you like the content of this channel, you can consider subscribing. Happy coding and stay safe.